Hey everybody, on today's episode we're going to talk about radical ideas for the coming collapse. You've thought of everything? Question mark? Have you? Well, we're going to discuss one aspect of something that I know you guys have at least considered, those who are prepping. Uh, and I want to share some radical ideas on the subject. So if you like the content that you find in this video and others on my channel, please click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for all my new subscribers. I can't tell you how much I, I appreciate it. It gives me encouragement that you guys are, are awake out there, that, that I'm not alone. So on with this video. All right, guys, let's dive right into this. Um, as you've heard me say before on any of my videos uh, or some of my videos, if you've been watching, America's back is broken. I believe her back is broken beyond repair. Don't think we're coming back from this. Um, there's a whole lot of talk about, you know, lobbying Washington and putting on our suits and ties and going and taking up positions and uh, uh, writing your congressman and phoning your congressman and all that kind of good stuff. I do not think that is a bad idea, okay? But all I think that those things will do at best is possibly buy a little more time. I don't think that we're going to right this ship. I think that, that, like I say, America's back is broken. She's already, you know, as a ship, uh, already sinking, you know, listing, right? And about to go down. That's that's just what I believe. I don't believe there is tur any turning this around. At best, maybe again uh, slowing down the process. But that being said, let me not discourage anyone from doing those things, because all the more time that we have is the more time that we have to prepare uh, for when the ultimate collapse does happen. So radical ideas for the coming collapse. Let's take Venezuela for an example. Now, Zombie Farmer and myself uh, a few nights ago did a live stream on Zombie's channel uh, about the current state of things in Venezuela. They were at the time on day five of a power outage, so I'm assuming they're on about day seven or eight now. <coughs> Excuse me, of a power outage. Um, so, first of all, when we look at Venezuela, we see that they're... they're money has been devalued over the last five or six years um, more more quickly and more rapidly in the last several months I believe their uh, their dollar equivalent is worth about 90 percent 96 percent less than what it was you know five years ago anyway and uh, you know, so it's worthless. Uh, these guys have no power. They have no internet. Things are down. Okay. Now, in America, I believe that financial collapse is coming regardless. Financial collapse is coming regardless. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't, I don't know for sure that a financial collapse, a, a failing of our system or a deliberate, you know, deliberate or otherwise, uh, collapse and fail of, of our economic system, uh, I believe that's going to happen, period. Now, whether or not I believe that is going to be the catalyst for, uh, for what ushers in this, this next era of America, uh, which is the one that we prepare for, whether or not it is strictly based on a financial collapse or not, I don't know. However, I do believe that any event in which we prepare for any event in which we prepare for is going to bring about, as part of it, financial collapse. So first of all, either the system is going to collapse and that's going to be what causes all the uproar and, and, and the die-off of people and riots in the streets and all that. Uh, whether or not it's a financial collapse to begin with or massive weather events uh, that affects the nation, you know, earthquakes, superstorms, uh, uh, a, a, a weaponized system that brings our grid down or hackers that bring our grid down or just failure in the old antiquated grid system brings it down for an extended period of time or longer with no end in sight. <coughs> Any of these things, you know, be it an EMP or a nuclear weapon or 
dirty bombs, uh, you know, anything to affect the electrical grid. If the truck stops shipping food, if there's no phones, no internet, um, no power, no electricity, of course, uh, uh, or like I said, or if it's a deliberate financial uh, collapse, all of these things are going to lead to a financial collapse. Do you think for a second that if uh, that if our system goes down, you know, in such a major and vast way that it affects every American in every corner of the United States? You know, uh, a blackout or a food shortage or or uh, the water quits running or anything like that. Do you think for a second that that's not going to cause a financial collapse too? Well, it will. So I believe a financial collapse is inevitable. In any of these scenarios that we plan and prep for, a financial collapse is going to be part of it. Okay. So I have some radical ideas for what to do in that collapse. Now, let me preface this before I go on any further and say that I am not offering you financial advice. I am going to tell you what mine and my family's plan is, something that we just came up with very recently, have talked to some friends about it, have looked into it, and uh, we have decided to make some moves. I'm gonna explain what they are here in just a few minutes. So, as preppers, assuming I'm talking to the preppers out there, and if I'm not, if I'm talking to non-preppers out here or newbies or people that are wanting to learn about it, listen closely. Here's some of the things that we as preppers do prepare for, that we that we plan, some skills that we try and hone. This is a not an all-inclusive list, and it certainly is not a list that uh, every prepper adheres to in every way. However, just to give you some ideas, uh, bushcraft and outdoor skills, firecraft, fire making skills, shelter making, uh, navigation, wood processing, outdoor sanitation and hygiene, primitive tool making, primitive clothing and shoe making, uh, plant, insect and animal identification, uh, signaling for help when and if needed, locating water, collecting water, purifying water, uh, food acquisition skills, tracking, hunting, fishing, trapping, foraging, gardening, raising livestock, cooking outdoors, field dressing, uh, outdoor food preservation, campfire cooking, health and fitness skills, first aid, natural remedies, your endurance, your strength, your balance, your flexibility, your personal security and your self-defense skills. All of these are important. Weapons making, tactical defense, stealth and gray man skills. Food preparation and storage skills, cooking, canning, preserving, organizing, labeling, uh, dating, uh, personal, uh, well, we're going to come back to that one because this is the topic. So, uh, you know, household skills, soap making, clothes making, sewing and mending, washing, cleaning, sanitation, DIY, handyman skills, do-it-yourself skills, plumbing, welding, um, uh, the list does go on, you know, uh, electrical, right? I mean, you know, if we're talking about like a, a grid down scenario, you know, can, can, do we have people with skills to be able to rebuild an electrical system of some kind, or at least, uh, components that they can use to their advantage, carpentry, woodworking, blacksmithing, tool making, mechanicking, shoemaking, communication, radio, uh, and others, uh, foreign languages, psychological skills, strong willpower, perseverance, a desire to strive, to survive and thrive, creativity and adaptability, the ability to remain calm in an emergency, uh, research skills, situational awareness, strategic thinking. These are all things that, that preppers, uh, by and large, think about and consider, hopefully plan for, come up with a way so that they can be better at these things. Um, but what about your wealth? All right, what about your wealth? The wealth that you hold right now, if you hold any, okay, I don't care if it's 500 extra dollars you might have shoved under a mattress, you know, or it's $500,000 that you've got in a savings account, you know, or a million dollars that you've got in an IRA or a 401k or whatever it is. If you've got wealth under the guise of the way that we here in America uh, explain wealth and define wealth today, and it's money and assets, okay? Um, Typically, our, our, by and large, Americans, our wealth is in money, 
or the assets that I speak of would be those 401ks, those uh, IRA accounts, those uh, your investments if you're if you're an investment into into the stock market. Uh, you know, or just straight up savings, you know, whether it's in the bank or cash money shoved in your mattress, you know, at home. But if all this goes down, right, all these things we talked about, your storms, your natural events, your, your weaponized events, your, uh, your invasions, your, your uh, you know, earthquakes, uh, all of these things that happen that I have said I believe are going to lead to a financial collapse. A financial collapse, I believe, is just going to be merely a byproduct of anything else that could or would happen. So if all that goes down, what happens to your wealth? The wealth that I've described that 90% of Americans have, their wealth is in dollars that they don't have their hands on. And even if they do have their hands on it, what good is a dollar, right, if the financial system is down, if the dollar is worthless? You know, maybe in the first few days, maybe up to a couple of weeks, some people, merchants perhaps, who won't recognize or don't recognize that this money is worthless and not going anywhere, uh, maybe they'll still allow money to be something that they'll trade for, you know, uh, and accept when you want to purchase goods. But at some point, the obvious is going to become clear that money is worthless. Uh, food is going to be what's sought after, okay? Food, ammunition maybe, you know, help things like that okay so all of all who prep should consider these things okay so what about our wealth what's it going to be worth after the financial collapse largely nothing so you've seen some of my other friends uh, on other channels uh, talking about stacking precious metals well my wife and I have had had major discussions here in the last few days about what that looks like and about this very same topic and we have decided to pull out all of our cash in every place that it is and turn it into silver and or gold haven't really decided we haven't done this yet this is a decision we've made and this is something i will be getting with uh my uh financial planner uh when i return to work uh, next week, I'm off work this week. When I return to work, because uh, this is through work, where I have my my deal set up, you know, my retirement deal set up, and a uh, uh, a wealth, you know, put away. And the reason we're going to do this is this. Now, now think of it this way: I'm literally going to pull my 401k out. I'm going to pull all my savings out. I'm going to pull my IRA out. I'm going to pull all that intangible money that I have, I am going to cash it in, have cash in hand. I've got cash put away at the house. I'm going to pull that money along with it, <coughs> cash in hand, and I'm going to take every bit of it, and I'm going to buy silver, and I'm going to buy gold. I'm going to buy precious metals, things I can touch on. I'm also obviously going to buy a big old, fat, strong, sturdy safe, okay? Uh, probably going to buy more than one. Probably going to. This is one thing. When I have the physical precious metals in my hands, they're going to be in different places. Not going to stack all my eggs in one basket. But the reason I'm going to do this is because I have three scenarios to look at, and then after the fact. Okay, let's go with uh, let's go with the worst case scenario first. If you've got all your money in a bank, in a 401k, an IRA, whatever it is, uh, savings, whatever, and the system goes down, you don't have that money anymore. Period. You don't have it. It's gone. Okay? You're not getting it back. It's gone. It's worthless. Okay? If you've been prepping in all these other ways that we talk about, then sure, you may can survive and go on and, and, and you know, have a life. But imagine longer term when society, in one way or another, begins to rebuild itself. Okay? you're still without that wealth okay so so the the worst case scenario is say you stack silver and gold right and then something goes down and your money if you had any is worthless but let's say nobody cares anything about silver or gold because you can't eat it right well you're no worse off you're no worse off if your money's in the bank it's gone if silver and gold is something that nobody wants in the in an after the shtf 
event, you're 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 still you know you're no better off. You know you haven't hurt yourself by having that silver stacked up because you were going to lose that money anyway. Now, the somewhere in the middle scenario, you got worst case. We're going to get to best case, but the somewhere in the middle scenario is at some point a system may get get put together, be it localized or a state system or even a national system. Some kind of system will get put back in place as to what what things are worth. And so silver and gold, you know, in this scenario, the somewhere in the middle scenario will uh, likely become worth something. Now it may, you know, its value may, may differ greatly where, you know, right now, let's say uh, uh, an ounce of silver that I want to say is somewhere between 15 and $20, right? What it's worth is it may, it may cost you, you know, five ounces of silver to, uh, to get a quart of milk. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it may be very expensive. It may be the other end of the spectrum. Either way, in the somewhere in the middle scenario, some type of value has been set to these things and you can use that. Okay, so, so right there, cash in the bank, gone. Precious metal stacked, possibly. Okay, and in the best case scenario, let's just say nothing happens. Nothing happens. 20, 30 years, however long, trucks along, and you're ready to retire, and you've been stacking silver. And another thing I'm going to say is, is, as long as things are going along, once I pull all my money and put it into precious metals, you know, as things do go along, I'm going to take that same amount of pay that I make at my job that I was allotting towards this 401k contribution <coughs> and stack precious metals with it. So I'll be building as long as I'm able to. So in the best case scenario, Let's say retirement time comes along and the system's still up and running. Well, presumably and likely, way more likely than not, these precious metals, your golds and your silvers, are going to be worth a whole lot more than what you paid for them 20, 30 years prior. Okay? So there is your retirement wealth. There is your retirement wealth. So best case scenario, You've got the wealth in precious metals that's going to increase in value over time if nothing happens. Worst case scenario, it's not worth anything to anybody, but neither is your money that you can't even put your hands on. Okay, so you're no better or worse off, you know, in that scenario. Uh, and of course, the somewhere in the middle, which is where I believe it's likely going to fall uh, as societies begin to, again, probably in a local version, start putting together what they deem value is for, for certain things and, and be willing to accept some of these metals uh, for those values. So, you know, it's kind of like this. I've heard it this way from very good friends of mine. If you can't touch it, you don't own it. Okay, so if you can't touch that money that's in the bank, that's in these accounts, you don't own it. But if you've got your precious metals and you physically can put your hands on them, you do own that wealth. So something to think about, guys. The financial collapse is coming one way or another. Again, be it driven by war, be it driven by uh, natural disaster, be it driven by whatever, you know, uh, or just a deliberate collapse of the system. We're $22 trillion as a country in debt. You think we're ever going to be able to pay that back? We're not. They just keep printing more money and keep keep propping up this financial system. So it is going to go down. Again, whether or not it's a, a system down itself or it's, it's a byproduct of one of these other scenarios I've described. It will happen. So think about what you're going to do with your wealth. Radical ideas. Your family's going to think you're crazy if you say, hey, I'm pulling all of my money out of everywhere where I've got it put up for my future and I'm going to stack precious metals. They're going to think you're nuts. Explain to them why it's not nuts. Explain to them why it may be the only way to procure and secure your wealth over time after SHTF, after a collapse. So, radical ideas for the coming collapse. I hope you guys will consider some of this stuff. Again, I am not offering financial advice. You do any of this stuff at your own risk, but that's what I'm going to do. And that is my plan regarding that. Thanks, guys, again, for all my new subs. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Real World Prepper, out.